In those days, you had to pass the announcer's test before you could actually host a show. So <clears throat> I failed. It took me six months to pass the damn announcer's test and a lot of help from some very good people like Ross Fenton, who was reading the news at that stage. And I aspired to take that job. I wanted that job. I wanted to, to do that. We did everything. We went everywhere. Uh, you know, rafting down the rivers, parachuting, um, gliding, aerobatics, uh, full of adventure, full of fun, and a really good experience. Uh, I thought, right, well, I want to host this program. So I did. I used to research furiously to make sure that my questions were factually sound and that I wasn't going to be challenged on a point of accuracy if I asked a question. And I was determined, so determined that I used to go into the studio with a pile of research. We never had a big row on screen. We had a few off screen, but we never had a row on screen because he accepted that point. And he was the one who said to me, there's no such thing as a stupid question, any stupid answers. Well, I didn't know sometimes whether people were going to turn up or not turn up. <laughs> you know, so we were shuffling all the time, worrying about whether someone would get in the studio at the right minute, or we'd be ready for them, or they'd be ready for us, or whatever. But uh, it, it always was a you know, great nightly challenge and good fun. One of the things I used to say to the other members of New Zealand On Air is, for God's sake, keep your blue pencils at home. Uh, you're not here to rewrite the scripts. We're here to decide whether a project is worth funding. It's not just a matter of asking the question in an intelligible form. It's also a question of, was the question answered? And if it wasn't, what are you going to do about it? So you always were thinking ahead and thinking and balancing whether it was worth pursuing a point or whether you should move on to, to ensure that you covered all the important topics.